Something, 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 something. It's MG the Future, you know what I'm about. Today is Thursday. Um, it's, uh, hold on, let me get this right. <laughs> Today's Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. We're live in effect. Today's stream is about Kanye West Donda, I hope. That's what my intentions are. I've seen a few people who are fond of drums talk about the drums on Donda, so I was like, hey, yo, those are my drums now. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to steal the drums from Donda. And there's nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Um, And yeah, we're just going to talk about the current events. I know up in the northern east region got some, some weather, some weather machine action. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Vibing out. <laughs> We ain't got a choice to but the vibe these days. Lord have mercy on all of our souls. I'm glad everyone's coming in. Uh, how do I want to start? I got I to gotta keep remembering to share my links. I think yesterday we had like 150 peak concurrence. Shout to you guys for showing up and showing out. But that could have been 200 if I'd have used my da got dag on social media. Because what is it for? Who's first in here? Antonio McKinney, are you on the road today, good sir? Did you get your truck back? What is the status update on what you're going through? And forgive me, the internet is not very forgiving to me for whatever reason. So if you notice any hiccups and blips and stuff, it's it's real. It's happening. But I'm going to do my very best. Like I got it on remote control. Stay woke. I need you guys to drop some likes too while we're here. Um, that'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm making a post right now. Don't worry about me. Peace to all the gods who are in the room. Appreciate you guys. Did you know that in Revelations, the whole reason why... Uh, everything is happening is so that we become gods. I did not know that was a thing. I guess that's why Jesus said, is it not written that ye are gods? But I didn't know the objective of Revelations was to convert the faithful chosen ones into gods. It really uh, puts things in perspective for you. I think I understand the metaphor to it, though, but I don't understand, understand. So I'm going to be a student, peep game, keep reading. Uh, it's 444, by the way, if you're on the East Coast. It is 144. I still follow the 44. It's no matter what hour it is. It's just, uh, if I see repetition, like 33, 44, I just, I just treat it like it's all the same. They call them angel numbers or something. Uh, and then, um, what else did I learn? I learned that rolling dice, you can roll dice in the Bible. It's called Claromancy. C-L-E-R-O. Mancy. Um, and you can ask God to favor the odds for you. Hold on real quick. God dang, uh, Discord done forgot my goddamn login. Like, hey, yo, son, what is your password? I don't have a password for Discord. You think I know my password for Discord? You think I would know? Like, my, I'm on my phone with it. You feel me? Give me one second. I'm still, I'm still on the, <laughs> I'm still on the, it's called Casting Lots, Classy Beats. You, you see? I knew I wasn't, I wasn't capping. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know Claromancy and Casting Lots was biblical, bro. So Dungeons and Dragons done turned it all the way up. I'm about to get into it. <laughs> heads or tails, king. Well, speaking of heads or tails, where's my golden... I have a gold coin. I have no idea where it is right now. I'm glad we talked about it, because now I'm going to be like panicking looking for my gold coin. Uh, I think that's my password. Two-factor... I don't... What the fuck? Hmm... I don't know what a backup code is. I have Authy though. Do I know my Authy password? Probably not. Yes, I do. I sure do. I hate having 20 different passwords. Oh my God. And then it wants you to log in and be like, yo, test your password out real quick. Congratulations, your password, nigga, it's mine. All right, so I put this token in. Yo, two, two factor, or uh, I guess. Two-factor has its purpose, but they need a better way. Because what if I said, F all this, I want a brand new phone and phone number. Then what do I do? I'm not going to remember I put Discord on this phone number. No one's going to remember I put Discord on this phone number. So, I don't get it. I got it all in my mind. 
Art of War, a work of art says, excuse me, but what is LLC Wolf Twitter? That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Because I guess everybody's getting exposed, including LLC Twitter today. We live. Oh, man. We're live stealing from Kanye today. One of my favorites. One of my hometown heroes. He, he's that guy. He's the man's pots and pans. Uh, I wish him well. I wish him health. I hope he is uh, doing better these days. I got it on my welcome Y'all ain't dropping enough likes, so I'm not even going to take the camera off. What is 20 likes going to do when it's 50 of y'all? Need you to get your thumbs working. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Do I have a background track? I don't have no background music. I don't. But I'm tired of my stream going red. Y'all let me know if my stream get choppy. But anyway, it's MG the Future, you know what he's about. I'm in this building. I figure I'd do something musical this week because I kind of feel like the world's about to come to an end. So I want to get kind of caught up at the end of the world doing what I love. And that's talking about people's hairlines. I've talked about people's hairlines so much in my life that I don't have one anymore. So that's, I wouldn't call it karma because karma would mean that life is fair. Life is not fair, therefore karma is not even a real thing. But whatever that is, you know, you, you attract what you talk about all the time. Lord have mercy. Hate to see it. Antonio McKinney's in the building. Mr. Harding's in the building with the boom. Booyaka, booyaka, booyaka. I should have plugged the virus in. That would have been a great idea. Lord have mercy. But it's not like Kanye used instruments on this album. Gasoline Greg's in the building. Oh, it said stealing. Gasoline Greg's a scammer. He be scamming, he be scamming MIDI notes. <laughs> Shout out to Gasoline Greg. Mr. Black Max in the building. 590 in here. David Treasure's in the building. DJV Live. Lone Boy Beach. Tragic Noodles. Marky Fax. Sour Dutch. A. Hey. And Tony McKinney says, I'm riding in my truck headed to the G-A-P-A. -A. The worst generation. Uh, he gave us the pirate flags. Oh, you know what time it is. 40 acres. I see you. Treacherous is in the building. Crisp and clean. Big up. The first five beats on Donda have the same 808. Peace, MG. Oh, yes, it does. Rashane, what's good? Time right now. Rashane says, what up, MG? What's good with you? Eyes open. I see you. B-Boy's in the building. PMC 2-6. What do you call 27 white beats in a row? Donda. Now, please keep in mind, PM26 said that. I'm just reading it out loud. We have to be more careful. Um, Class CB says, I've been on the 222s lately. Well, 444 is the 222s, except for when you go to Wendy's. So it's the same saying, indirectly. Like so, like when we, let's let's do a little lesson real quick in angel numbers and claromancy. In case y'all wonder what I was talking about with the Bible, I didn't show y'all anything, but I just want to show y'all casting lots. It comes up as claromancy is a form of sorting, caching of lots, or casting of lots in which an outcome is determined by means of normally would be considered random, such as the rolling of dice, but that are sometimes believed to reveal the will of God or other universal forces and entities. Claromancy is supported by the Bible. Hebrew Israelites and you know the people of the book Saba Sabians us the um, we've been we've been we've been rolling dice for a very long time so no wonder right it's in the Bible so that's allegedly is pretty old so you know we've been rolling dice for a minute cuz so when you be rolling dice to get your rent paid that's divine intuition I think now nah, I won't I won't stretch it that far but you get it so we have that then the other thing I wanted to look up while I had the internet. Uh, well, that would explain the whole Jesus is the King of Kings type beats. I hate to see it. Uh, Money Mike's was good with you. London's in the building. Peace to the tribe. Ock the damn shadow. 40 acres. I thought you meant roll dice for money. I know. I know. We being cute and clamorous, but are we really? <laughs> like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of wiggle room in that definition. Artemis is in the building. Let me get this game. What game are you getting, Artemis? Augustus is in the building. They gloss over all that growing up. Classy beats. Oh yeah. Sunday church. They got, they got a, what is that called? Uh, they have an agenda, and their agenda from their seminary school, which is from Rome, and I think it's called the Constantinian Creed. Yeah, so the Constantinian Creed agenda, um, so the Sunday church pastors all have a particular agenda or formula that they follow. Just like university level, like they all have like the McGraw-Hill book uh, class notes, and they kind of follow that. And then, you know, lead you to Zeus or Eshu or whatever they're worshiping on Sunday. When you look at the white painting of Jesus, it's actually uh, Constantine. So that whole thing's very interesting to me. I'm sure at this point in life, no one cares. But if you did care, look into it. 
What's good, MJ So Wrong? Donda, Donda, Donda. I want to do the Donda, Donda, Donda thing, MJ So Wrong. They said that was his mother's heartbeat before she died. I don't know how accurate that is, but I, I've seen weirder things out of Hollywood. We all got God. We all be gods, bro. Treacherous. What's good, bro? 40 Acres. Ed Verveer says, if we can't, if he can, can't deliver on an album named after his mother, it's over. Ed Verveer. So I'm getting vibes from producer Twitter and producer YouTube right now that you guys aren't feeling the production on Donda. Wow. I did not expect that from producers who grew up on Kanye West. Me, personally, uh, I've, I only listened to it the whole way through maybe two and a half times and then i kind of like picked out some of my favorite tracks to put in the playlist but i really hate our culture not hate our culture i don't hate our culture i hate the expediency or how what's the words for this i hate how immediate no that's not the word either our satisfaction with media lately has been has been spent really fast what i mean by that is like something dope will come out like Loki or uh, I don't know I don't I don't fucking know anyway any new piece of media content comes out we kind of burn through it real fast whether it's good or not and I don't think it's streaming's fault I think them blaming it on immediate access and streaming is big cap because before streaming we had piracy and I feel like the pirate era was the best era in life anyway so it's not necessarily because we have immediate access to it or it's free or cheap. That's, that's bullshit. It's just that it doesn't feel like the marketing and the cultural rele relevance is not there. And this is just my hypothesis. Uh, fuck what y'all talking about, what you think about it. But in my hypothesis, it feels like because there seems to be such a wide disconnect between us and Kanye, culturally, it might be harder for us to resonate with his output when his face and name is on it and i don't know what that is i kind of feel like the further people get away from us the less we resonate with them and i think that's just natural right he's on a different stratosphere as a creative financially or you know clout wise like he's a different person his, his shoes and his clothing alone like he don't really quote unquote need to do this outside of for the cultural relevancy and then the shenanigans that comes with it the drama that's always made public like a lot of that is kind of weird to us because we literally cannot relate to that. So now we're expected to transpose that foreign energy onto the music that we grew up on and it's not the same. It's not the same when he was in the studio in Newark, Chicago, wherever. Like whenever a nigga tell you, yo, I'm about to play some chords in Hawaii next to the, to the volcano, it's already going to be a disconnect. You know, you feel me? No matter how beautiful and how good that energy is to channel for music, it's just for everybody else, we kind of get alienated, I think. I think that's what it really is. I don't think it's because it's Kanye. I don't think it's whack for whack sake. I don't think technically anything's wrong with it. I think if Polo G did this album, nah, I'd do you one better. I think if Chance the Rapper did this album, y'all would fucking love it. So it's just something about the energy around this that's not connecting for folks because production wise it's not bad he got the features you want to see on it matter of fact when i was looking at remote control i shouldn't have said that because you know they love to block these got on streams i'll be doing just for mentioning my, my man's pots and pans name but j anyway just look at the credits the credits are crazy right like if you read this album on paper you'd be like oh my god this is going to be nuts if this would have dropped on rapmusic.com in 2005 i would have lost my fucking mind I'm like, what? They have who on here? But like this song, the one I'm about to take the drum pattern from. Uh, Digital Nas, shout to him. I think he had an interview on Producer Grind. You got Kanye West, of course. You got 88 Keys, who always finds his way on these albums. Mike Dean, OG Volta. This is my first time seeing that name, unless it's one of the Q Beats brothers. And then it has a Q Beats loop. Who doesn't want a Q Beats loop? I know some people who are going to try to remake these loops today. So technically what happened why 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 isn't it not getting a favorable res favorable response especially from older producers sheesh hate to see it all right so we got that i haven't listened to it yet either i'm waiting for kendrick to drop i am not waiting for kendrick i am one of those guys i know people love kendrick i think i love kendrick as a person though i think kendrick might be like the cooler cooler than the other side of the pillow but when it comes to like i don't know I'm capping. I, I love Kendrick's first album, Good Kid, Mad City. 
It was like a masterpiece. But it's just some of the songs he did after that, I just... I think... I, I know what it is with Kendrick. I think good Kid Mad City is too good. And, and he just can't do that again. It's just the energy's not there. The Dre co-sign energy, what that used to mean, isn't there no more. Motherfucking uh, having, like, having a Pharrell or a Neptune's feature when we thought they were on the outs when it was over. Uh, got down the way it was mixed, shot the Ali. Like, Good Kid, Mad City was just a masterpiece in my humble opinion. But then, like, when we start getting the dam and stuff, or the Pimp a Butterfly, Pimp a, that's what it was. To Pimp a Butterfly just lost me. I just, I be honest with you, I don't, I don't, I still don't get it. Um, but every, so what happened was everyone pretended like it was the greatest thing ever. So they set the bar really high. And then I listened to it and I was kind of underwhelmed. And then like some of the themes of the songs and stuff, I didn't personally resonate with. So I was like, oh wow, this is not Good Kid Mad City Part 2. This is a artistic piece. But people on the timeline were telling me it was like the hottest shit ever. And it irritated me, the the, the narrative. Because I, I, I believe I have really good ears. I believe I'd be an awesome producer producer. But I would have produced produced that album better if it was getting like based on the critical response, it, it should have sounded better to me. And just just in my own my own shit. So yeah, the Kendrick lost me after that, then Dan came out and I was like, Okay, yeah, all right. He's trying to do the commercial thing, a cool and then, you know, he got on his uh his chosen few wave and that's how I knew as a person I liked him because he was uh he I think he he felt it I, f- I think like he felt the shift coming and he shifted as an individual allegedly I don't know him personally but it feels like he shifted and um now he kind of is doing the same thing Dr. Dre does where Dr. Dre kind of shifted or <laughs> I don't know I don't know him either but Dr. Dre went MIA and we're like, ah, oh, detox is coming, detox is coming. And I kind of feel like Kendrick borrowed some of that West Coast energy of like, you know, anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. And hopefully we don't get a Compton soundtrack. Because none of y'all talk about the Compton soundtrack. Let's not even get cute and glamorous. There was not a SSL in sight on that album. B-Boy says, our attention span is shorter than ever. B-Boy, let me debate you real quick. If if our attention span is shorter, way shorter than ever, then how are people binge watching their favorite show? Just just put it in that context, right? Like if if you have ADD, like I'd be around people with real ADD, like real life ADD, not the I don't like to focus and be productive ADD. Like I have ADD even when I'm having fun ADD. I'm around people like that. And um they have a short attention span. Like, they'll be talking to you like, uh, eh, you know what I mean? Now, if you're talking about a consumer attention span, I don't think our attention span is shorter. I think what we're consuming is mids. So, uh, we may have too many choices. I do agree to people we might be, quote unquote, flooded or oversaturated with choices. Go to any streaming platform, you're going to notice that ASAP. Rocky. But, um... Nah, niggas is binge watching anime, Netflix shows, Marvel shows. Mugs are like watching the Marvel Universe in sequential order in one day or two. Motherfuckers are on their phone all day, scrolling the timeline, literally all day, cracking jokes. So, I don't think the word attention span is really what we're describing. But you know, when I get loose and I start speaking my mind, people think I'm being mean or negative about everything, and I'm really not. I just don't fucking believe it. Like, I can't believe that we're oversaturated with mids. So, now you're in a mids culture where there's no hierarchy. There's no superstar, really. Rihanna's doing detox, too, ain't she? Rihanna knows she owes us an album, but she want to be cute and clamorous, literally speaking, by promoting her clothing brand and stuff with her her cultural clout. The sad thing is, and I don't even want to speak doom on her. Not, not, Not even doom. I'm using very... I'm being very illiterate, but Rihanna only got like two years left of cultural clout. So what happens to Fendi when... I don't even want to speak like that. Rihanna didn't do nothing to me. I don't want to to prophesy or, or, or say something that, you know, I don't even want to set off those dominoes. All I'm saying is our superstars ain't doing music no more for real, for real. So it's like, yeah. 
So this year, thank God, bro, because last year, what we're experiencing right now, we're supposed to experience at the end of last year. So everything's offset by a year. So we so we got Kanye. We're going to get Drake. And we still may get a surprise from Rihanna. Maybe that's why I'm, I'm chilling out. But um, it's going to hit us different because they owed us this. And I think we kind of equate we kind of equate what's going on like with them owing us these projects as a fan and then letting us starve a little bit through the pan through the panty and then it not manifesting and then when it manifests it's not what we wanted or expected you feel me like we're going to feel a way about that there's definitely going to be some embitterness and, and while i'm talking and narrating let me go ahead and run musical rebalance so this is the song called rc for ad reasons um, I can't play it for obvious reasons. I, I don't even think it matters if I play it. I think Kanye's uh, record label is probably going to scan this and motherfucking cut me off the matrix anyway. But uh, I'm going to separate these tracks and see if we get a nice little drum track. I'm going to bring that drum track into FL or whatever, whatever I can chop up the fastest in because I don't have Quoted Pro. And I'm going to see if I can get the drums, like literally the drum sounds. And then I want to see if I can get a loop of the drums to copy the drum pattern and then manipulate that somehow or substitute it or sign in them. I don't know. I, I just, I'm just freestyling. So while that's doing that, Jayon said he left us and he didn't bring us with him. Artemis says, well, he is hiding his face. Malachi says he's definitely not creative from the space that we all shared with him prior to college dropout. Boom. He, he has lapsed us in culture. He, he has a whole different set of influences. That's for damn sure. But he brought the cultural people in, he thought, and it's still not connecting. So we got to figure that out for Mr. Kanye, but he's going to have to charge. I'm going to have to charge him for that. I want my goddamn, uh, what's that shit called? Con consultation fee. I'm tired of doing this stuff for free, bro. <laughs> the worst generation says, you think that's why he's changing his name to Ye? Words connect? Perhaps. It's the common case of loving a small artist and hailing them to become big artists. Sour Dutch. For underground artists, that is true. But for Kanye, he was a superstar when he came out, bro. Like, he, he did a song with Brandy, my nigga. He did a song with Ray J's sister, bro. Like, fresh out the gate. We loved him as a superstar. Like, Kanye was a superstar before we called him a superstar. I don't know if that's true. I think it's, I think it's the hanging around white people thing. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't mean to say it like that, white people. I love white people. I have a white grandmother. Don't you love that? Like, I ain't racist. I have black friends. No, but for real, I have a white grandmother. But when our quote unquote black entertainers from the streets or street adjacent get around rich white people, they tend to become more like them. And we don't really have to get into that or speculate too much on why that is or what that looks like. But when you're around white people as a creative, it changes your taste. So what you're going to find is that white people love this shit. So what's happening is Kanye is not making music for us no more. Get it? Like, he has a white engineer, Mike Dean. And I know Mike Dean's been in the culture, been in Texas and stuff, but still, like, it's... You do that because you do that secretly, I think. I think Kanye would get a Mike Dean secretly because Mike Dean is tuned into rock and tuned into what white people love, even though we give him a cultural clout token. But for real, for real, not really. It's really the rock part of it. It's really the, the, the tendencies and the, the, the uh, taste and the, uh, you know what goes on in white music. And then you notice hip hop did that. And we call it hip hop minimalism, but it really is just like, uh, like the silver bullet for white girls, I think. Quote me on that later. I don't think they hear the same way we do. So whatever, whatever. I'm not a, I'm not a behavioral psychologist, but it's true. So anyway, and I noticed this too. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it's a wild experience. Being on the West Coast is a wild, wild life. Going through Wyoming was wild. Stopping in North Dakota or whatever it was to go to Walmart was wild. I started to believe like, oh, United States has a lot of white people. I get it now. But what I paid attention to was the white kids. And all the white kids I've seen this year with the Yeezys on or the Yeezy adjacents and um, the way they dress kind of like, you say they dress like us, but we don't even dress like that for real, for real. But you know what I'm talking about, the skinny jeans, the, the branded t-shirts, you know, they kind of have like that, that, that suedo afro thing that they do, the rocket power look. And um, everyone kind of dressed the same. Everyone looks the same. Everyone got the same type of shoes on. And when you see them in their car, they're playing like party next door type of music. I don't know what that's called, but 
what we'll call it party next door type music and you see them mouthing the n-word when it comes up and you're just like wow why these are the people who listen to russ i was like oh shit russ does have a fan base i didn't i think i used to think russ was capping but russ has a fan base and it's them and i think kanye realizes that or someone on the scene realizes that's a bigger base than us embittered 30 somethings who miss real music so at the end of the day what are they going to tell us it's just business Mr. Fox says, that's why I've always really connected with bucket drummers. They are cl closest to the streets. Human being says, decap says his drums are all over the album. Is this true? Human being, I am not decap. How would I know? But let me entertain you, human being. Let's say decap's drums were indeed all over that album. Would it matter? Do, do you want the drums because you like them? Or do you want to be on the album? Because I tell you the truth. I'd send, I'll send Kanye some shit that has no drums on it. Just the fact that I'm on a Kanye West album would do it for me. I'm not, I'm not rushing to Decap's drums. I have Decap. I have a lot of Decap drums, actually. I don't use them, though. And there's no, no, no shade against Decap drums or nothing like that. But when drums are already RMSed out, they just don't blend in my music well. Or I have to remap how I mix to really appreciate Decap's drums. And then also, I kind of think Decap and them... Even our brother Curtis King, he makes that type of music, that West Coast bass, future bass, uh, you know, yeah, maybe Donda type beats, like the precursor to Donda, but this, it's not, uh, it's all bass driven, and um, I low-key suck at bass, so I don't listen to music that way, I never had a sub in my studio, shame on me, I'm getting my own personal car for the first time in my life this year with a system in it, so it's like, I don't have that, e I'm not tuned to it, so when I hear the drums, I'm like, oh wow, that's loud. But when I hear my sample or loop behind it, I'm like, mm -mm, no nigga, like, no, we gotta start over. So that's, all, that's how I feel about that. But from a marketing standpoint, other people said their stuff is all over Donda. They're just doing that for a few likes. And hopefully that someone like you who cares about that kind of thing buys it. I don't, I, I can't, I don't know how you would verify if that's true or not, especially when old young bull up higher up in the chat said, the first six songs got the same 808 in it. What are we talking about? 40 Acres think Kanye need acid next time. Eclipse 66 was good. Jayon says, I still love the Famine album. How many are in Mike Dean? How many years is Mike Dean? Mike Dean's in his 50s. I think he's almost 60. MH Simple says, the media is very powerful in telling people what to think. It is very powerful, but it's losing its pull though, right? Money Mike says, did you hear off the grid? Y'all cursing. That's why they're blocking you out. I did hear it. What's good, Bangs Mookie? I love Kendrick's on Next Level. Yeah, MG hates Kendrick's music for some reason. I never got it. I just explained why I didn't resonate with Kendrick. I don't hate Kendrick. I don't even hate his music. I think Good Kid Mad City as an album is better than most of the albums that have come out. If not all of them in the past 10 years. So 